Okay, welcome to Ditan Park. Uh, today we're going to learn a few things about, eventually, about Chinese medicine. And we're going to come across around the back and learn about Chinese medicine. You know, Chinese medicine is complex. It's a little bit like Chinese language. You know, you have to learn pinyin, you have to learn tones. And then six months later, you still can't speak Chinese language. Well, Chinese medicine is a little bit like that too. So what we need to know is some background information, a little bit about um, Taoism, yin yang, the five elements, and the philosophy behind Chinese medicine. And then we're going to give you some of the keys to Chinese medicine. We're going to do that through three main ideas. What the emperor was doing here at this altar. How that's related to Taoism. Yeah, the heart and the key philosophy of Chinese culture and Chinese medicine. And then how that lies and give you the keys to preventative health in Chinese medicine. Sound okay? All right, let's go. Okay, this is Di Tan Park. In, uh, in Chinese, Di literally means earth. Tan, we call it the temple of earth, but Tan is not a temple. Tan is literally a raised platform for worship. You know, in English, we'd often call that an altar, right? It's a place where you offer sacrifices. Um, so we call this the altar of earth. I do anyhow, right? And in the altar of earth, there are actually what we'll find in Beijing, five main altars. And this is linked to the metaphysical aspects of Chinese culture and Chinese medicine. Metaphysics. Beyond the physical, what do we really believe about life? What do the Chinese believe about the big metaphysical questions? You know, the three big metaphysical questions. Who am I? Why am I here? And where am I going? Now, each culture answers them different. We try to explore them through what the emperor is doing and the, and the rituals and the ideas of that, right? So, in Beijing, you'll have the main city walls and in the center of the city, you actually have... Um, what do you have in the middle of the city? Gugong. Gugong, which is Forbidden City. Forbidden city. Who lives there? The emperor idea, right? Actually, just outside the city gates in the south, we have the altar of heaven. And just outside the city gates in the north, where we are right now, that was the old city wall here, that's the canal and the moat there, is the altar of earth. Can you see this vertical axis? This brings us into one of the key aspects of Taoism and Chinese medicine, that human beings stand between the great forces of heaven and earth. Yeah, Our spirit is from heaven and our body is from the earth. And we are a small part of a much larger natural order. In actual fact, the idea is, these are assumptions about reality, right? There's no objective truth, yeah? We are a small part of the larger, but we're also a reflection of the larger. And we see this through the vertical axis. The most important axis for human beings is us in relation to the earth and heaven. On the east side of the city, we have another altar, another tan, you know what it's called? You've probably been there if you live here, Rutan Park, the altar of the sun. And then on the west side of the city, you have the altar of the moon. This is the yang element, this is it. If we are a small part of a much larger natural order, our best chance of survival and order and health is to follow the great natural forces that created us. First we follow the sun, then we follow the moon. So at different times of the year, the emperor must go according to the lunar solar calendar and make offerings at these altars. There's one in the center, there's one in the north, there's one in the south, there's one in the east and one in the north. And this pattern or shape you'll see very important in Chinese philosophy and also in the five elements. And it represents kind of winter solstice, summer solstice, the equinoxes and the earth in the middle. It comes from geocentric astronomy. We'll enter into that in a moment. So Chinese medicine is a 3,000 year old medical system that includes what? What do you think of when we think of Chinese medicine? Herbs, needles. Herbs, acupuncture, and one other clinical modality of Chinese medicine? Massage. Massage, body work. In fact, if you go to the University of Chinese Medicine here, in the third year, you'll have to decide, do you want to be a doctor of herbs? Do you want to be a doctor of acupuncture? Or do you want to be a doctor of physiotherapy? Yeah, these are the, what I say, the clinical arms of Chinese medicine. And we study all of those now when we study overseas in Chinese medicine, right? And then we have the preventative arm. Not many people talk about that. It's kind of, this is to treat disease, this is to prevent or promote life and health. So we talk about living in accordance with natural rhythms, we talk about um, dietary therapy, healing exercise like qigong and tai chi, yeah, all the things that can promote. So we call that yang sheng. And today we're, gonna, we're not going to talk about this, we're going to talk about this. And so my full-time clinic does this a lot. 
But all the power, I believe, in Chinese medicine is here, in the relational sciences and how to stay healthy. Remember, from the ancient times, the, the most famous Chinese medicine practitioner of the last 2,000 years, Sun Tzu Miao, he says, only when your diet and lifestyle fail should you use herbs and acupuncture. Or if you go back to 200 BC, the most important classic in Chinese medicine, the Yellow Emperor's classic, it's treating disease after it manifests is like digging the well after you're thirsty. And they even reinforce that. They say, like forging the weapons after the war has begun. You know, so we come back to prevention, prevention. What is it that maintains balance and health? Because the assumption in Chinese medicine is if we maintain balance and health for the human body, then health and well-being will naturally be maintained. That assumption comes from same for plants, same for animals, same for the planet. So why are humans any different? We are a small part of the larger. Yeah? Okay, let's go have a look at the altar.